Okay, as you know, this evening is uh, co-sponsored by Hope Not Hate, and we've got, actually got a question here from Greater Glasgow, Hope Not Hate. What I'll maybe do is, uh, rather than ask people to <coughs> ask their questions from the floor, I'll maybe just ask it on their behalf, and it'll maybe help move things along. So what Greater Glasgow, Hope Not Hate, are asking is, how will you, that's the candidates, work to challenge the messages from some media that scapegoat migrants and suggesting that they are to blame for shortages of housing, problems with NHS provision and other public services. Um, do you want to start with that? Yep, yeah, sure. Um, the one thing I would do is, um, there's two issues here and they get conflated and they shouldn't do. One issue is that there is an issue with lack of affordable housing stock, lack of social uh, housing for rent, um, and there is pressures on services in England, disproportionately so than Scotland. That's a completely different issue from immigration and asylum seeking. Um, they're two different things and they have to be tackled differently. So on the issue of, um, of immigration, um, let me talk specifically about as asylum seekers. Uh, my apologies. Um, I was just saying that, uh, I'll, I'll recap briefly. Two issues, I think. One is that there's a genuine uh, issue about um, ownership, uh, sorry, about um, affordable properties, social rented properties, and pressure on public services. Specifically in England, disproportionately. So, there's a different issue about asylum seekers, refugees, and again, separately, immigrants. Um, on the issue of asylum seekers and refugees, we should be really proud. We should be so proud that I'm sure across the panel and across most political parties, with the exception of UKIP and the Tories, perhaps, we are really proud um, as a city, particularly, to take in asylum seekers and refugees into Glasgow, people that come and escape from horrible circumstances and are welcomed here with open arms and we'll take, uh, we'll take them in in the time of need and also welcome them into our economy and our society um, and I think the rhetoric, the language that politicians, candidates and people use in the public space has to be very careful, they have to be very careful what they're saying. On the issue of immigration, I also think um, the Conservative candidate was talking about um, after we came here to study and now uh, stayed here. One thing we need to reintroduce is the post-study work, uh, post work visa to make sure that people who come and study here can continue to stay here, contribute to not only our economic prosperity but our intellectual prosperity um, and our standing across the world. That's one thing that needs to happen straight away. Um, and I think we have to challenge that, um, that rhetoric um, publicly and, and assert that we believe in human rights and we will stand up for the Human Rights Act. We're not going to be um, scared by right-wingers like UKIP, um, as the Tories are, into this idea of British rights. The idea that somehow Britain's, uh, humans in Britain are somehow different from humans across the world. Human rights are universal and they are self-affirmed. They, they are not given to us by any government or anybody else. So that's one thing we need to do. And the other thing is, we do need to address some of the issues about um, we need to build our policy is 300,000 more homes across the UK, although it's a devolved issue. We need um, about 30,000, I would say, social rented houses in Scotland, and I think the SNP need to go off the backside and get building more houses. Um, we also need um, greater investment in the NHS. We said we'll invest £8 billion in the NHS, which is what we need. Uh, that will have £800 million of consequences for Scotland. And we also need to give mental health services parity in this game with physical health services. I hope that answers it. Okay. Okay, Zoe, perhaps? No. Work this way back here. So, um, blaming immigrants for uh, austerity uh, for the crisis is uh, is the oldest trick in the book, and um, I think that uh, people are angry at the lack of housing and lack of jobs and low pay, and the media are able to palm it off on migrants instead of blaming the rich, which you should be doing. Um, there is obviously one daily newspaper which you can read, which will always be standing on the side of. Uh, working people, no matter what their skin colour is, and that's the Morning Star, which does a lot of work to challenge uh, racism in the media. Also, I hope not hate produce a lot of statistics which break down the myths that are uh, propagated by the far right. But I think also that the far right are very good. Like statistics are one thing; they're important, but they're not convincing to people who already have an agenda or already have a belief. And I think that the far right are very good at using like uh, visual stuff, like this is this family they've claimed. Um, you know, Britain first used those pictures that they've taken from the internet, and this is this family they've claimed so much uh, from the state. Whereas, like, um, we've started to use the, with the I Am an Immigrant campaign, I think that's a really positive way of actually, like, you, if you can relate to it as a person who's come here who's do, con contributing to the economy, and also, as well as, like, breaking down the, the, um, the kind of, like, the 
racism, I think you also, we need to commit, like there is, the housing crisis is not because of migrants, it's because we haven't built any, since like, it's the lowest rate of house, council houses that have been built for, since like, before the war, so we obviously need to build a lot of council houses and tax the rich and invest it back in our national health service. I think it's a political choice, really. Uh, just like this, punish the poor and blame the immigrant, and they're both really political choices, par partially political choices, I think. There's a, a culture change that we need, and that's that we need, as I said earlier, we need to challenge this every time it's said. We need to be able to say, no, that's not the case. No, that's not these people's fault. We need to keep the Human Rights Act. I agree, it's also our policy to keep the post-study visas. We also need to cooperate with the international community and offer refugees visas so that they don't have to tear up their passports and put themselves in the hands of human traffickers so that they can legitimately come across here rather than having to um, end up here as asylum seekers left to live on less than subsistence. That's scandalous. That's back to the 30s when the unemployment benefit was less than subsistence. Uh, so therefore, the society is already acquiescing and treating asylum seekers as lesser. It's already saying they need less money. We need to stop that. That needs to stop. All the official markers of treating people as lesser have to stop. We need a better democracy, one where we see people of all different backgrounds and races more fully represented. Our representatives are really, look, in my point of view, I don't think there's not enough women, there's not enough folk from all walks of life, and there's not enough people from different uh, cultural and racial backgrounds. We would need all that as well to change things. I mean, since I knew I was going to be standing in this election, it was clear to me that the issue I challenged and the racist myths of scapegoating and the total toxic atmosphere of racism wouldn't be central to it. And that's what I've tried to do across Glasgow and the North and the working class communities where this will come up, where we've had it on stalls, where people will come up to you and say that. Um, in the run-up to the March 21st, big demonstration stand up to racism and fascism. We used the opportunity in this election campaign to promote that demonstration as well. And we unashamedly have gone on out in every area of our campaign with the £10 an hour tax the rich and have put it on every leaflet. It's one of our central demands in terms of no scapegoating, don't blame migrants, no racism, fight austerity. So I think it is absolutely central. Racism is the kiss of death for working people. The only weapon that the rulers have, they've lost all the arguments of austerity and privatisation, they've lost all the arguments. All they can do is hope that working class people will be diverted to blame their neighbour. And these are the arguments that we conduct with ordinary working class people. Fortunately, when you make those arguments, you find it's very open. You find that ordinary working class people look to the example of the Glasgow Girls, which was a campaign inspired by refugee um, and asylum seeking young people themselves, but absolutely backed up um, all the way with the local community. The recent deaths at sea, it really um, shows me that that's again going to be, continue to be an issue. David Cameron has got blood in his hands as far as I'm concerned. It is murder. Along with the other EU leaders, they very clearly knew what they were doing when they withdrew rescue ships to the, to prevent a pull factor. This is what we're up against, and um, they're complicit. And I think the Gary Young article that was in the Guardian, I do really put it really well at the end. He says you can build a 10 foot wall to keep out poor people, they'll develop an 11 foot ladder. You know, you can do these things. Why don't we welcome migrants? Why don't we welcome refugees? And lastly, um, hopefully, see you on the 30th of May shutting down Dungavel. Um, we want to see an end to all detention. Detention's inhumane. People that have been detained have described it as worse than a prison sentence. There was a guy who was both imprisoned here and detained, and he said, in, the, in prison, you count the days down, you know how long you're going to be there. But when you're in detention, you count the days up, because we have absolutely no control over it whatsoever. 
Um, so anyway, I'll let other people say things, but it's absolutely crucial that we do these things and I think we need to link it and make it central as part of all your work. I am an immigrant and I am proud to be an immigrant. I'm also proud to be a British citizen because this country is the only country in the world where someone like me came here in 2004. Man, this country offered someone like me education, a job, it allowed me to start the business and it allowed me to stand for parliament as well. I'm also proud that I'm a conservative because the value of immigrants are the values of conservatives. The value of hard work, aspiration, independence, individuality, responsibility, trying to improve one's life. And this is why I joined the Conservative Party just over a year ago, because it identified with my values, with the values of immigrants. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's the responsibility of all of us to continue to work with hope, not hate in terms of making sure that we get that message out there because the brutal reality is is that some of that right wing rhetoric that we hear does we get back in the doorsteps and we have to you know uh, address those concerns um, in terms of that and I did work with Home No Hate putting through a conference motion for the SNP on UKIP, the far right and the um, issues there. I think that we also have a responsibility to ensure that the public are aware of why those who are seeking asylum in this country are here, and many of them are fleeing sexual and domestic violence, uh, and we need to keep on at that, and I know that there's work, for example, uh, the government creating an integration network are doing a really good job in working with asylum seekers, I think the fact that they actually do a fantastic job. I agree with the closing of the Gavel as well. It's unacceptable some of the uh, stories we've heard of asylum seekers being handcuffed to their beds when they're pregnant and trying to give labour. I think that was absolutely disgusting, some of that, that uh, was going on. My view is, is that we actually need more immigration, not less, because we have a uh, series of skill shortages in this country for many historical reasons, and we should be uh, more welcoming. Uh, and we should welcome immigration in this country to address some of the uh, the uh, issues that we face as a country. We've got to try and address um, the question of scapegoating by making sure that we address the issues of shortages so that if people are scapegoating migrants over shortages of homes, of jobs, of you know, health care and education, we've got to explain to people um, that why those shortages exist and actually try and address them. And, you know, as an MP in, in the southwest of Glasgow constituency, I've certainly come across lots of situations where people are blaming migrants for problems, which are clearly not uh, the migrants' fault, but they are, do find themselves in competition with migrants for scarce resources. And the issue, of course, is how do you manage to make the resources less scarce? And I think that we've got to be absolutely clear that cuts being imposed upon Glasgow, for example, have got to be reversed. If we're serious about wanting to integrate migrants in this country, we've got to try and avoid that competition. And for example, I mean, I think it's noticeable that Glasgow's share of local government funding um, from the Scottish Government has been cut drastically. Since 2008, it's been cut by 370 million. This year alone, if it had been on the basis of Labour's previous pattern of spending, Glasgow this year would have 100, had £109 million pounds more. That would have enabled the provision of additional service, which would clearly then, in those circumstances, have lessened the competition for services. Similarly, the question of health spending. It's absurd, absurd in my view, that when we've had a, let me just check what the figure is, since 2009-10 um, to 2013-14, there's been a, an 11, sorry, a 7% increase in spending in Scotland on health. The Tories in England have actually increased spending by 50% more than that. They've actually spent 11% more 
in the UK as a whole, of which the English share were the larger. So we actually have a position where the Tories in England are spending more of an increase in health than the SNP are in Scotland. Now, in those circumstances, with rising populations, there is then competition for resources. And you can understand why then people turn around and say, well, it's the fault of the, the outsider that we, there's this competition for resources, when the real problem is that there's not enough resources. And the same thing applies to education and to, to jobs as well. And that's the whole question of housing. Now, I disagree with, with some of my colleagues about the need for skilled migrants, because while we have got a need for skilled people, the difficulty about allowing employers just simply to bring in skilled migrants from abroad is it allows them to avoid the financial burden of training people in this country. Because if an employer can manage to get somebody trained from abroad, they will always do that. They should be obliged by public procurement rules to yeah. actually train people in this country. And yeah, I very yeah. much regret that the Scottish Government voted down Labour proposals to do precisely that. Now, as you would anticipate, I mean, I could, I could go on for a while on this, but the only thing I want to say is that I, I accept that we have got to do something about this people smuggling and the like. We've got to make it clear <coughs> that we want to take refugees, we want to help refugees, but we've got to try and deal with many of them in their countries of origin, because the difficulty with the present system is that those who have, have got the money, who are able to pay the state people smugglers, are then jump ahead, able to jump ahead of those who are in equal, if not greater need, because, it's, because they're able to pay the smugglers. We've got to try and find ways of dealing through, with agencies such as the, the UN and the UNHCR, of identifying people in the countries in need, and we bring them over so that we are making a contribution, not just simply leaving it to criminal gangs and the vagaries of the market. I mean, there's probably a lot of agreement on a number of points being made tonight on this issue. I think it's really important to identify that uh, one of the roots of the obnoxious weed that is racism and scapegoat is undoubtedly, as Ian's just said, the question of scarcity of resources for working class people, including specifically the indigenous population. We then blame the newcomers, the outsiders, who used to be the Irish, or maybe the Italians, uh, or whoever, but now a whole uh, number of different uh, people of different creeds and countries of origin. And I think the other cause and root that we have to identify is that actually a lot of the xenophobia, and specifically Islamophobia, has arisen as a result of war. Wars of imperialism, wars for oil and plunder, wars actually initiated by, on this occasion, a previous Labour government going into the likes of Iraq. And I think that whipped up an atmosphere which then was meat and uh, water for the racists to exploit, to blame people of a certain creed or colour uh, because they're associated with the war on terror, so-called, a monumental disaster and, and has led to, to that kind of scapegoating. So uh, alongside the question of scarcity, I think that's the issue. The Scottish Socialist Party, back, I can't remember the exact year, but I think it was about 2000 roughly, when there was the murder in Sight Hill. We played an instrumental part in going into that community, with members already, but going into it uh, in quite numbers, in order to appeal to people to unite for better housing, for better facilities, for an end to the deprivation we were suffering from the Labour Council at the time, and actually help to create what became called uh, Sight Hill United, which fought for better facilities and actually united the people those who had been uh, recently settled as asylum seekers, for example, alongside the indigenous long-term residents of that area of uh, the city. So we don't just talk the talk. And uh, I'll just finish by saying for, for the sake of time that I think that one of the really important things as well, as well as arguing for house building, where we argue for 100,000 new houses in Scotland, not Britain, Scotland, over the next four years, for rent, not for uh, the rent to be jacked up by private landlords, exploiting people with multiple occupancy, particularly for migrant people, for example, but alongside measures like that, which would also create jobs and remove some of the arguments that there's no jobs available for us, why should the foreigners get them? Uh, alongside that, I think it's also really important that the trade union movement consciously recruits people 
from whatever country they originate. I'm the convener of Osdal in my own place, and I can't remember many nationalities, but at least 10 that we've got in the Union. Uh, the only one so far that's not represented locally is the Welsh, but <laughs> there's no Welsh worker there. But, you know, we've got people from all over Eastern Europe, Africa, uh, obviously Ireland, <coughs> The, the four nations of, uh, of Britain, apart from Wales, like I said. And that is an example where people unite for better conditions at work. And that cuts across a lot of the racist division and nonsense. So I think it's a combination of identifying scarcity, but also wars are out of uh, scapegoating and racism, and consciously seeking to organise people in unity and action for better facilities.